Welcome to the full moon in Cancer, which wax full at 6.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, before we call the quarters, let us prepare our hearts and spirits by performing a balancing ritual as Kabbalists do before any great work. So let us close our eyes and imagine a brilliant white light glistening above your crown chakra. Now imagine yourself raising your hand, taking hold of a piece of that light, lower your hand to your head, and as you touch your forehead, say, Opt without art. Then see the light following your hand to your heart, touch your heart, and say, Malchut. Point your finger to the ground, seeing the light going into the earth. Then take your hand to your right shoulder, and as you touch it, say Vagvura. Then touch your left shoulder, seeing the light travel from the right to the left. And as you touch the left shoulder, say Vagadola. Then outstretch both arms, saying Laolam. Lower your hands and say Amen, it is so. Now we can say that our sacred space has been cleansed. All that have gathered have arrived and prepared themselves for this celebration. Let us anoint ourselves in love, clearing our hearts and minds for the good work ahead. And before we continue further, as is tradition, let us invite the guardians of the watchtowers, gods and goddesses to lend us their energies and to guard our sacred circle. All hail to the watchtower of the east, to the element of air, spirit and intuition, intellect and sense of reason and knowledge, the soft breeze, the very breath of life to all that live upon this great earth. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of discernment for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circle set outside of time and charge it by your power. We bid hail and welcome to East and Air. All hail to the Watchtower of the South, the element of fire, creative energy and will, the burning flames of desire. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of vitality and drive for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circle, set outside of time, and charge it by your power, helping us to move forward. We bid hail and welcome to South and Fire. All hail to the Watchtower of the West, the element of water, power of dreams and emotion, the power to dare and that which washes us of negativity and teaches us love. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us the power of love for the good work ahead. Guard our sacred circle set outside of time and charge it by your power, giving us wisdom and love for all. We bid hail and welcome to West and Water. All hail to the Watchtower of the North, the element of Earth, the power of Mother and Earth, the power of silence and manifestation, that which we create with our thoughts. We ask you to join us in our ritual, lending us your powers of stability and grounding for the work ahead. Guard our circles set outside of time and charge it by your power. We bid hail and welcome to North and Earth. To the ancients, the older versions of ourselves, the divine mystery. Bring that which is true to our respective paths together, helping us to heal the past that has carried negative karma. Spirits above, spirit below, guardian power within that connects us all. We call it you to be at your strongest with us this evening and to lend us your guidance. We look above and seal the height with Yud He Vav. We look below and seal the deep with Yud Vav He. We look forward and seal the east with He Yud Vav. We look backward and seal the west with Vav He Yud. We look to the right and seal the south with Vav Yud He. We look to the left and seal the north with He Vav Yud. These are the inevitable existences, the spirit of living God. 
air, water, fire, height, depth, east, west, north, and south. Let all who came not in response to our call, we acknowledge your presence, wishing you well, and ask that you depart now in peace. Let all who have entered our circle be here in perfect love and perfect trust. The circle is now cast. Welcome to the full moon in Cancer, which waxed at 6.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon, representing our inner being, the female archetype, including our dreams, instincts, habit patterns, and unconscious drives in the sign of Cancer. Feminine cardinal water, who is like a toddler who grabs onto something and won't let it go, and then throws a tantrum when someone tries to take it away. Cardinal signs take action, charging right in to get things done. But when emotions from the watery part of her instincts show up, those actions are purely based on feeling and instinct. Water signs want to enfold everything and be everywhere. Water signs show where we emphasize nurturing and intuition. The moon in Cancer helps us to sense and understand the moods and feelings of others. She gives a knack for counseling and nursing because of that nurturing nature of Cancer. The moon is at home in Cancer, so her water restraints are quite strong. With 12th house energies, we have to consider one's psychological makeup in determining how this full moon will affect each of us. Its energies may bring some things to the surface that we thought we had dealt with, but really just swept under the rug, so to speak. Aspecting this full moon is the opposition with the Sun and Pluto and the trine with Neptune. And again, we're taking into consideration those planets that are in the bucket with the Sun and Pluto, not because they directly affect the moon's energies, but they are strong enough in their position that they require an honorable mention. That's Saturn and Mercury. The opposition occurs when planets are at 180 degrees from each other and could be considered a sort of tug of war as the planets involved vie for expression. The sun being of the highest energy in the opposition is the planet of our outer being, the male archetype, including our will, conscious drives, and basic character. Ruled by Aries, the sun is our strength and feeds the ego, which can be protective when it's kept in check. The sun is in Capricorn, the sign of work, structure, and responsibility. The sun in Capricorn has a clear vision and wants to be in control because the Capricorn sun sees things objectively and thinks that it's the only way, its way is the only way that things can be done reasonably. The opposition can cause a problem here if things don't go as planned because then the emotions on the how and the why things went wrong come into play. And if you've had a typical day, like many of the rest of us have had, you understand how this goes. Pluto is the planet of transformations and extremes, and in Capricorn, that could mean a good deuce, dose of the structure and taking those responsibilities seriously. Some radical self-analysis could be in order to get the moon out of that psychological undoing funk and redirecting us into serving others rather than worrying about what's wrong with us. The trine A occurs when planets are at 120 degrees apart and is considered an aspect of ease and comfort. Neptune is the planet of our higher selves and understanding and is at home in Pisces, which can assist the moon in opening and strengthening our intuition. With eighth house energies, Neptune steps away from the 12th house moons, focus on our psychology and turns our focus inward to our sensual natures and regeneration. Also in the sixth house is the planet Saturn, the planet of <clears throat> limitations and responsibilities, along with Mercury, the planet of our intellectual natures. While not directly aspecting this full moon, they sit with Pluto in his endeavors towards work and service, with Saturn giving us more structure and guidelines, and Mercury helping us to think our way around things. True note is in Taurus, telling us to keep our focus on our projects and stick it out with the Ascendant in Leo, the sign of strength and personal power. 
in the Hebrew is the 16th day of the month of Shabbat. And according to the Hebrew calendar, it's Tu Bishvat, the new year for trees that celebrates the season in which the earliest blooming trees emerge from their winter sleep. Spiritually, it's a reminder that trees and our forests are sacred and help us to understand our own interconnectedness as we consider their root systems underground all touching each other and in taking in the grass, the plants, the crops, and the earth's energy that touches us all. I was reading in a book on elemental magic and it was commenting on how many of our shoes are sold with rubber which can block our feeling the earth's energies. So as soon as we're able, step outside in our bare feet and absorb and reconnect to those trees. Speaking of reconnecting, we should also remember that our bodies are the manifested Kabbalistic tree of life, which each sufro representing a part of our soul, which also keeps us connected to the collective consciousness in that upper triad that is universal to all. Today we turn our focus to the Hebrew letter which created the month of Shabbat, the letter Sadi. The letter Sadi is connected to the 28th path on the Kabbalistic tree of life, connecting the sphero of Netzhak, which is number seven. Uh, it is victory and is colored green with that of Yesod, the number nine, and that is foundation, the color purple. This is the sphera of Netzhak here. And the sod in the purple here is number nine. And as you can see, it's on the lower quadrant of the Kabbalistic tree of life. The letter Sadi also connects us with the emperor card in the Toth Tarot. The sphere of Netzach is connected to the planet Venus in your chart and oversees peace and diplomacy while the sphera of Yesod is said to contain all the secrets and subconscious power of the universe and it's connected to the law of attraction that operates in your life whether you are aware of it or not. It is related to the moon in your chart and exposes your inner reflexes and how you instinctively react to various situations. Aleister Crowley wrote the following of the Emperor card, quote, Use all thine energy to rule thy thought. Burn up thy thought as the phoenix." End quote. Our thoughts are as important in your daily life as the physical processes operating your body functions. That They are that critical. We habitually often think things like, if I eat that, I'll get fat. And the truth is, if that's what you think and that's what you believe, that is what will happen. From an early age, we've been programmed to think a certain way by the people who raised us, our schooling, and society at large. You drive down the freeway and you read boards that say, I'm this or that. And as you read that to yourself, now get this once and for all, you are creating your reality if you internalize it and take it in. In a book I was reading recently, it was saying that we typically have the exact same day, every single day, day after day, because we get stuck in this loop of the same kind of thought patterns that keep us wandering in the wilderness. We hear that we can't continue to do the same things, expecting a different result. So let's give some serious consideration to what we're really spending our time thinking about. The Emperor card is the third alchemical trump and represents sulfur and the male fiery energy of the universe. It's the swift creative energy. His shield identifies him with the red tincture and the nature of the sun and gold. The alchemical, alchemical recipe states that we must first find the white tincture, which is represented by the Empress and then the red and unite them to accomplish the great work. The sphera of Yasod on the body is located in the sacral chakra, the chakra of sensual pleasures and our basal instincts. We won't get into the details of the grand rite and the reasons behind it here, 
but suffice it to say that Yasod exudes a high amount of creative energy when in balance, and there is a reason that it must remain under the control of the Ruach in Tiberet. For the correspondences, for the sphere of Yasod, the divine Hebrew name is Shaddai El Chai. Planetary correspondence is the moon, the color is violet, the number is nine. For the sphera of Netzach, the divine Hebrew name is Yehovah Sabaot, the number is seven, corresponding planet is Venus, and the color is green. The 28th path is known as the natural intelligence, so-called because through it is consummated and perfected the nature of every existing thing beneath the sun. The Hebrew letter for the path is Sadi, which means the fish hook. The meaning of the simple form of the letter is imagination. The corresponding astrological sign is Taurus. Living beings include the eagle, the peacock, and man and the goddess Isis. Areas that the 28th path can help you include energizing yourself and others, developing intuition and astrological or other technical work, recognizing vampirism and your own inherent strength to resist it. That's energy suckers. Gaining knowledge of what is needed for you to move forward toward your own perfection, opening the solar plexus center, increasing creativity, and increasing your ability to detach. Chick Cicero in scrying the Tree of Life states of the 28th path, this is focused meditation, a higher form of meditation than that found in the previous path. The process of focused meditation involves concentrating on certain symbols that act as portals to inner knowledge of the cosmos. Through meditation, one consciously participates in the expansion of universal understanding. The path symbol is the symbol of Aquarius. That is all of the information that we have on the correspondences for this full moon in Cancer. For a complete list of the details and the ways that the 28th path can help you, you may visit our blog at https slash slash gray hornet, that's G-R-E hornet dot wix site dot com slash marika moon ritual slash post slash full moon in cancer dash one. So now we may release the guardians and close out our ceremony. We bid farewell to the guardians of north, earth, west, water, south, fire, east, and air. We thank you for joining in our celebration and we trust in you to carry forth our wishes and intentions to begin the process of manifestation according to our will and the love that binds us all. Go if you will, stay if you must, May there be peace between us now and forever to all beings in all directions. In love and trust, the circle is now open but always unbroken. Wishing you all a blessed full moon in cancer and stay safe out there.